All right, greetings everybody, Chemistry 125 lab students. This is your pre-lab lecture for the laboratory pipetting in the laboratory. So I'm going to try to make these a little shorter. The first two ones were pretty long. Uh, this one should be pretty short. So make sure you follow all of your instructor's guidance for pre-lab activities, pre-lab questions, pre-lab quiz. Everybody does things a little bit differently. And then make sure you print this out. Uh, before you come, and there's a, there's a whole bunch of densities on the back. Okay, well, we're gonna get to that. So we're gonna get right to what should you start to do when you come in here. So make sure you read the lab. The, the purpose of the lab is to compare three different pipettes. Pipettes are used to measure volume, and there's a really important skill. So we have this whole activity around pipetting. And you're gonna compare the accuracy of three different kinds of pipettes. How are you going to do that? Well, you're going to measure a certain volume with the pipette and record what volume the pipette tells you you did. And then you'll compare that to a calculated volume. What does that mean? Well, okay, so you know the density. I'm just zooming in here. Maybe I'll try to zoom in. There we go. So density, and uh, this is all water. So density is mass over volume. And uh, we'll measure the temperature of the room because temperature uh, density is temperature dependent. And then we'll uh, look up the density of water to a high degree of precision. It's on here, all these numbers. So we'll have a very, very precise density. And we'll have a really precise mass from our electronic balances in here. Because you'll weigh a flask empty, then you'll weigh it again and subtract it to. I'm not going to go through all that. That's not, that should be pretty simple by now. And then you'll calculate the volume. So you do your math, and there you go. So that's the idea. Measured volume compared to a calculated volume using mass, which is a pretty common thing to do. And we're doing something a little different today. You can see I'm moving around. I'm, I'm not the one actually that's gonna demonstrate this for you. Uh, this is Wes. Hi, this is, yeah, this is Wes Hoffner. He's a, a senior chemistry major. He's actually training to be a teacher. So he's gonna help me out with this uh, video and maybe some other parts of the course. But anyway. Um, so there's three different pipettes, and I think I'm just going to let Wes take it away here, and I'll zoom in, zoom out, and maybe ask some questions. So um, here we have the volumetric pipette. So here you can see it says it's a five milliliter pipette. I can zoom in on that, Wes, and see here. There we go. Yeah. And uh, so when you want to pipette into something, you always want to make sure you clean out your bowl to make sure there's nothing in there. And when you uh, want to pipette slowly draw up and you place the pipette bowl on top of the pipette and you slowly draw up the solution or water in this case that you want and you want to come past the the line here that that's the right there is five milliliters so you want to draw past the line and then stop it with your finger and then bring it back down to the line. Yeah, pipetting takes a little time, folks. So while he's making that adjustment, I'm just going to reiterate some things. So you have the container that you're pipetting from, and that bulb that he put on top, before it's not there now, set that there gently. Don't like jam it on there. And then you draw the liquid up past that mark, and now you try to get the meniscus on that mark. On that mark. Oh wow, you did it, you got it right the first time. Cool. And now he's dispensing that into an Erlenmeyer flask, which is what you'll do. So you'll weigh an Erlenmeyer flask dry and empty, then you'll pipette into it, and now he's going to demonstrate how to get that last drop out by touching it to the side of the glass. I think he did that, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and while you're there, Wes, can you show them that there's still a little bit of liquid in the pipette at the yeah. tip? At the tip here, there's a little bit of liquid in there. You don't ever want to blast that liquid out with air from the pipette bowl. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing that is a procedure that might not be set in this lab, but you never want to like pipette out of an Erlenmeyer flask because you will end up you can end up breaking the tip of the pipette. It's something that I. Uh, future down the line that you could get scolded for. Yeah, yeah. Well, so what container should you pipette from? Um, really, only you should pipe that out of beakers. Okay. So everything else is kind of beakers and um, 
yeah, that's about it. You want to pour everything back into a beaker if you're going to move it to something else. Okay. And that was a, so that was a volumetric pipette. And uh, before we move on to that one, I also want to point out a couple things about a volumetric pipette. It says 5 ml on the side. It's actually not 5 ml. It's 5.00 ml, three significant digits. It doesn't say that on there. But when you get the meniscus right on that etched line that Wes showed you, it's three sig figs. It's really, really precise for five milliliters and five milliliters only. And I forget which size we're doing in lab, but it doesn't really matter. The, the same procedure applies. Cool. So that's a volumetric pipette. What are we doing next? So um, here's a graduated pipette. And uh, as you can see, it has uh, graduated lines on here. This one is a one milliliter um, graduated pipette. As you can see, there's like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And it's very similar to the um, volumetric pipette. So when you want to pipette something, you do the same procedure. You always clear out the air in there. And you come all the way up past the, the zero mark. Now, do you have to go to the zero mark on this one? Um, like, say you want 0.5 milliliters. Could you use it for this? I think going to the zero mark gives you the best options. You, you want to always go to the zero mark. Okay. And while he... Before you do anything. And okay. Once you hit the zero mark, you can see there, hit that zero mark. Yeah, the meniscus, right on this, the bottom of the meniscus, right on the zero. Awesome. And you want to transfer the amount all the way to the line. You want to stop on the line that you're trying to transfer. So I'm going to try and transfer um, 0.5 mils here. So he's not going to drain the whole thing. And this is fine. The other way you could do it is just fill up to where you want. Now while he's doing that, this takes a while to drain. These really small pipettes there's a lot of molecular interaction between the water and the glass. There's a lot of hydrogen bonding, which we'll talk about in the course. These instruments... Oh, that's awesome. Good. And then he's just going to put the other into a waste container. Both of these first two, actually all these pipettes, th these are called TD instruments, to deliver. So they are delivering the volume. That's why there's a little bit of water left over in there because it doesn't, it only drips out the volume there that says, sorry, I'm kind of taking a picture of the bench. I'm not sure why I'm doing that. <laughs> so those are two of the three pipettes. And the last one is, if you've had a biology class, you're probably really familiar with. Yeah, so here's an automatic pipette. Um, if you're going to change the amount of volume in here, as right now I have a um, thousand microliters, which is, um, it's one milliliter. But to change that, you press this button and you turn the dial here gently, gently <laughs> to what you want to, to what you want it to be set to. And since this pipette is a uh, thousand uh, microliter pipette or one milliliter, you want to very closely get to that that number there, and then make sure you're you're on that number that you want to dispense. So. When you're going to dispense something, you need to obtain a, um, a, uh, a, uh, just a pipette, pipette tip. Pipette tip. And uh, you place it on the end. You don't want to put it on there too top, like too tight. You only want it on there just a little bit. In some cases, they're even on a stand, and you, you, you can sit there and click it onto the stand. So when you want to draw something up, there's there's like two stopping points on an automatic pipette. So when you want to draw something up, you only go to the first stopping point. So you go down and press down to the first stopping point. You draw up the amount of solution or water that you would like. And then you pull out. And then you go down to the second stopping point past the first one. down completely yeah let me could, could you I'm gonna zoom in on pressing down completely could you show that just just depress so you go yeah so this so you go down to the first stopping point draw up the amount of solution and then you go to the you 
go to all the way down or the second stopping point. So there's the first stopping point. You go to the second stopping point. Excellent. And that pushes all the liquid out. Now, to, to reiterate, you would not do the equivalent of that with the red pipe pet bulb on the other two ones. You leave the liquid in there. That's an important point to know. So the uh, automatic, the ADP, <laughs> Uh, pushes it all out. The other ones are not designed to push all the liquid out, but they are meant to to deliver the volume that you have. Awesome. And then if you were going to remove the pipette tip, there you uh, there is a little dispensing feature here. And some of them it works. The, the, these ones are like the uh, newer pipettes, so they. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and that's that tab hard. in the front. I think yeah. I didn't miss it, but that's okay. I'll but, get better at recording these. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any um. Any common mistakes that you had to learn about pipetting that you can pass on to your fellow students, like mistakes or things that they go wrong, what to do? That, that one common mistake that I had said earlier was the pipetting out of a um, Erlenmeyer flask into something else, because that always, almost always results in the tip snapping off into the beaker, and then yeah. your solution that you've made so hard in lab is now waste but um that's awesome it's, it's yeah that and the um when you do pipe that up solution in in either of these um pipettes you always want to make sure that you have more than the solution or more more of the solution than what the pipette actually takes in because if you don't have say there's only a little bit here i'll do it a little i don't know if i should do a little demo of it sure but, uh, Yeah, air bubbles sometimes get into yeah. these pipettes if there's not enough liquid, and you have to tap those air bubbles out. It's kind of hard to show that, but we'll see. And and you could get water that splashes up through the pipette up to the top sometimes, and it goes up into the bowl. There, that's perfect. See that? And then there, there could be yep. some water going in, which is it's not what you want. So. That is a great point, Wes. Thanks for making that, because... If you don't have enough liquid in the beaker, the water can then shoot up into the pipette and into the bulb. And if that happens, don't let that liquid sit in there. We need to clean that out. Because I think some, and that it happens all the time. It, mistakes get made, but just don't let it in there. Cool. So pipette from a beaker. Don't pipette from an Erlenmeyer flask. And one thing I see students sometimes do is they probably try to pipette from a volumetric flask with a tall, skinny neck. Ugh, that's terrible. Don't do that. Anything else? Uh, I think that's pretty good. Okay. Well, thanks, Wes.